Hi, my name is Chris, and today I have to actually reshoot a video that I already published a couple of months ago, but I happened to publish the wrong video. So today we are again focusing on the topic of how you can synchronize two different video sources in OBS and make those video sources look like they are actually happening at the same time. This can be especially useful if you're, for example, using an HDMI camera that is captured via a capture card as well as the internal FaceTime camera of your MacBook. But it can also be interesting if you are using your GoPro via RTMP in your OBS setup. The setup of this type of use of your GoPro Max or Hero 8 or 9 is described in a video that I have linked in the description below, and there I also linked to the video that I previously made about how you can synchronize these things, but apparently I messed up a little bit and it didn't really publish the right video. So let's go over that again. Basically right now on the screen you can see that these two cameras are actually with a delay between each other. The one camera on the right hand side for me, or at least that's how it looks on my screen, is the camera that I'm also using to record this with, which is in Canon EOS R through a Camlink capture card and then into my computer. That picture is actually a little slower when compared to the FaceTime camera that is built into my computer. Now obviously you can see on the screen that the quality difference between the Canon EOS R via a capture card compared to a FaceTime camera, that is really, really strong. And there's a good reason why more and more people are starting to use capture cards and proper cameras for their live streams as well as webcasts of some sorts, even conference calling. But that's not the topic today. Today we are focusing on the fact that these two are actually not in sync with each other. And what we're noticing is that actually the FaceTime camera is a little bit faster than the capture card. And that actually makes a little bit sense because the signal has to travel from the camera through HDMI to the capture card. There it is converted to a signal that is understood via USB from the computer and then the computer has to process it as well and display that signal. And the effect might even be more pronounced because I am right now using a 4K signal that is coming from the Canon EOS R and then it's being processed by all of those things. So now we have those two on the screen and the easiest to actually synchronize them is probably to actually have them kind of like aligned on the screen that you can see them both at the same time, like for example, doing motions like this so that you can clearly see which one is happening faster when you look into your OBS interface. Now looking at these two again, the FaceTime camera is definitely faster than the other one. And that means we have to apply the effect to the FaceTime camera. The reason for this is that you can't really tell a signal to come any earlier than it is already coming. You can, however, tell a signal that is already there to have a little bit of a delay. And we do that by applying a filter. So we go onto the FaceTime camera, in my case, we do a right click here and go to filters. Inside of the filters effect panel, we go to the plus sign and there is a effect called render delay. Now we can just rename this or leave it as is. Right now it makes sense to just leave that. And now we can put this next to here and with those two aligned, we can now test again how much of a delay might be needed. So let's put 200 milliseconds, for example, doing my motion again, and that looks quite perfect. Now, if we close this off and we do the motion again, I would say that is almost perfect. You might want to dial it in a little further. And I personally would say the easiest way to do that is to take a recording of what you're seeing on your screen, opening that recording in whatever editing software you have, be it Premiere Pro or Final Cut or iMovie, and then actually counting the frames or milliseconds between the two motions. That way you can actually dial this in quite perfectly so that you are set up for a nice and synchronous live stream with your two cameras connected and visible at the same time. Now you might get away with this if you just have one camera open at a time and you're just switching between the two. You don't really notice if there is any delay whatsoever. However, if you, for example, have a tabletop and you show one camera signal that is kind of like coming from the top and the other one is filming you frontal, that you have some type of unboxing, for example, there it can be quite annoying if you have those two signals not really synchronized. 
So this is how you can do this in OBS. Of course, you'll also have to look into whether or not your audio source is synchronized, and you can do that on the advanced audio preferences here, and you can set a sync offset here, which may be needed as well. For me, for example, my audio signal is actually also coming from the Canon EOS R, and that way I would assume that this is already in sync. However, that's also something you might want to test. Again, the easiest way to test your audio sync is to record your audio signal, do a clap of some sorts inside of the video so that you can see the clap in the video, and that way you can then also go into your editing software, open the video up, and count how many milliseconds are there between the audio signal and the audio clap, as well as the video signal. That's it for this video, and I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more video tutorials like this, as well as videos on all kinds of different topics, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao!